After all this talk on orthorexia, it's time to shed some light on a far more dangerous eating disorder. It is not only a neurotic, but a necrotic eating pattern. It affects millions of people across the Western world, and that is carnorexia nervosa. An eating disorder characterized by a compulsive desire to eat dead animal flesh. Carnorexia is very different than anorexia in which an means without and orexia means appetite. In the case of carnorexia, carn means meat and of course orexia means appetite. So it is an appetite for the flesh, in this case, animals. Most people's carnorexia manipulates them into eating flesh on a daily basis, sometimes two or three times a day. For breakfast, it would be dead pig or bacon. For lunch, dead cow or hamburger, and for dinner, some drumsticks, aka dead chicken. Carnorexia nervosa is a psychological disorder for multiple reasons. Firstly, people actually get nervous when they don't regularly consume meat, despite there being no nutritional requirement by humans to eat meat. Secondly, this is a damaging emotional paradox where people do not want to harm animals, yet they feel a need to eat dead ones. And they actually consider themselves friends of animals, but in the words of George Bernard Shaw, animals are my friends and I don't eat my friends. Carnorexia involves a deep level of denial. They believe that animals that they eat are raised in a humane and loving way, despite the fact that 99% of animals are factory farmed, and that humane slaughter is a paradox. And worst of all, it is the normal state in the Western world to be carnorexic. It is normalized and therefore extremely difficult to disassociate from. So how do you know if you have carnorexia? Question number one. Do you consider yourself an animal lover but regularly consume animals you love? Number two. Are you in denial about scientific conclusions about the dangers of eating animals? And number three. Have you not pooped today? And carnorexia is very dangerous for your health. Consuming large amounts of animal flesh leads to heart disease, which kills 1,600 Americans per day. It leads to cancer, which kills about 1,400 Americans a day. And it also leads to obesity at over 800 Americans per day. It clogs brain arteries, which contributes to Alzheimer's and stroke. And it also adds to digestive diseases like ulcerative colitis and chronic constipation. And don't forget death. This study that looked at over half a million people found that high versus low meat consumption increased chance of death by 31%. Carnorexia is caused partly by a lack of education. A study found that 90% of Americans believe that they eat a healthy diet. Yet when studied objectively, 75% of Americans eat a poor diet, measuring factors like fruit and vegetable consumption. And of course, people aren't aware that you can live a perfectly healthy life while consuming no meat or animal products. And the longest living population ever formally studied is the Adventist vegetarians meaning the longest living people on earth, don't eat any meat. Carnorexia is instilled early on. Children are given animal flesh shortly after they are weaned off of breast milk. And the cholesterol and saturated fat from that flesh builds up in the arteries, which is why, quote, almost every North American child over the age of three years has some degree of aortic fatty streaks, which is the beginning of heart disease. The most dangerous part of carnorexia is that it is normal. Most people suffer from this compulsion to eat dead animal flesh, making tackling this eating disorder a huge undertaking. So how do you overcome carnorexia personally? I used to have carnorexia. I felt that I needed to eat, say, fish or some type of meat just to make sure I didn't waste away into oblivion. But obviously that was completely irrational, and here I am a few years later with more muscle than I had previously. The first step is to realize that you have a problem, and then attempt to go several days without eating animal flesh, and if you can do that, then avoid it entirely, much like an alcoholic avoids alcohol. So feel free to let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts on carnorexia? How does it compare to orthorexia, for example? All right, that's it. Thank you for watching.